I now want to start with another story of outrage. You, know, you all know a few weeks back we got into it heavily here on the platform when um, some reversed racist a-hole at um, Creative New Zealand decided to pull funding for one of the longest-running Shakespeare pr in schools programs the country's had, a really good program that seemed to me to um, celebrate um, one of the world's greatest playwrights and also used his works as a basis for a multicultural and really, really um, worthwhile um, schools program that had sent a lot of people on the road to being involved in theatre. Um, that funding was pulled because Shakespeare was supposedly some post-colonial racist or something, and the government, reading the room for once, stepped in and basically provided independent funding uh, from Creative New Zealand. But unfortunately, during that controversy, another outrage, another cultural outrage was, it seems to me, overlooked. And I recommend that you read an excellent piece by Lois Williams, a former RNZ reporter, in, of all places, Newsroom. And she has written an excellent piece about the funding that has been cut from by Creative New Zealand for the Arts on Tour program. And the Arts on Tour program, from my understanding, takes all sorts of arts, but largely performing arts, to communities that just in no way would ever be able to see this stuff and see on stage what Arts on Tour brings to them. Uh, it works all over the country and it gets $230,000 per year. That's, I imagine, less than your average communications expert at Waka Kotahi gets. Two hundred and thirty grand a year, but their funding has been cut. Um, and a whole lot of communities that have seen the likes of Michael Hurst, Don McGlashan and that, who just wouldn't tour in these far-flung corners of New Zealand, all that is going to end. Uh, and it would appear that the same sort of pill-clutching, uh, cringy um, anti-racism, reverse racism has been involved. So to find out a little more about this story, which I think is as outrageous as um, the Shakespeare decision, we are joined now by the head of the trust that runs the Arts on Tour program. His name is Steve Thomas. He's based in Christchurch. He's the Artistic Director of Arts on Tour in New Zealand. He's, he's with us now. Steve Kiora, welcome to the platform. How are you? Oh, Marina, Sean, I, I, look, I, you've left me nothing to say, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was mind-boggling. I mean, you know, from going from your merch uh, problems there, and, and, and as it happens, I was just trying to log into my... Um, tennis club to book a a, a a court, you know, and I was thinking, Jesus, how do you do this? You know, the world's going a bit crazy. It is. Now, Steve, I, I, I have, I'll be honest, I've never seen an arts on to a show. Tell <laughs> yeah, us, though, how they work yeah. and, and how long you've been going and, and how this thing runs. Well, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's been running for 27 years and, um, oh, mate, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been with it since the early days because i started out my career with the old qe2 arts oh, council yeah. Um, yeah i was a southern regional um touring manager down here in christchurch and you know we started to build a, a a network of well we didn't start to build we had a beautiful network of community um arts councils regional councils and um the qe2 arts council sort of uh, you know, was was hanging above it, and uh, that was restructured back in 1995 to uh, the birth of Creative New Zealand, um, and this established a lot of the community uh, network um, at that time. Uh, so I just sort of kept on trucking, uh, you know, as a sole trader uh, for 10 years, um, running, you know, and keeping these community networks going with beautiful touring kiwi touring artists um and then uh, then came along uh, with the support of creative new zealand at that time um and then came along the requirement to a uh, former trust uh which was a legal requirement so that we could basically receive funds and also apply to other charitable trusts community trusts yeah. um which we did in 2005 so 
Since then, we've been this arts on tour NZ Trust, and we have a trust board. I am the artistic director. Now, I was the general manager. Um, there's two of us. Um, we, work, we work pretty diligently to keep a supply of really high-quality Kiwi artists to places like Reefton and uh, Podiki and even Tauranga and up in Northland and even to Stewart Island. Wow. So places that, you know, on a commercial basis, artistic companies are not going to visit because they're too small, the logistics are too tough. What sort of shows are you taking to places like Reefton and Apotiki? Well, over the years, I mean, some of the names you mentioned, you know, uh, Don McGlashan, uh, Moana Maniaputo, um, Marlon Williams, for example, you know, people that have gone wow. on. Um, you know, seven or eight years ago, we toured Marlon uh, with Delaney Davidson uh, to places like Barrytown. You know, I've got a picture of Matt Cyber Settlers Hall on the west coast there in Barrytown or, or down in Ocarito or, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. It, it really gets uh, the artists out. They love it because they get to see their own country um, and they get to meet these really nice people like in Reefton where Daisy makes uh, club sandwiches and the, <clears throat> and the cakes and, the, and they love that, you know, it's like yeah. real Who people. is the audience for your stuff? Obviously people who live in real New Zealand or... What's some yeah, cool yeah, old it's, time it's, it's real music for real people. It's real theatre for me, real people. Um, as you say, you know, Michael Hurst has toured with us three times. Um, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty much up there, isn't he, in yeah, terms of yeah. New Zealand theatre? Mm. Um, and he's he's done Tom Scott's play, The Daylight Atheist, yeah. and more recently this year. He did a wonderful thing that he's co-produced uh, with, his, with his mate John Gibson called The Golden Ass, uh, which is the telling of a very ancient uh, Greek story, and it was brilliant, you know. And he's actually going on to, you know, these things go on. They get their trial around the country. They, they work them. They get better every day. Um, they, you know, it gives them the opportunity, gives the artists an opportunity to develop the work into something that's really sharp. Had you ever had any complaints from Creative New Zealand? And I presume they provide the bulk of your funding. Is that true or not? Yeah, yes, it is. It was uh, 235 grand a year, uh, which covered two sort of average salaries, I'd have to say. Um, and the rest of the money went on paying for the on-road costs of the artists to be comfortable in their travel so that when they got to where they were going, they were, if not rested, they, they had a, a reliable vehicle they didn't have to sleep in it like we used to do in the old days. Um, they had a motel, you know. They had per DMs. They had a daily pocket pocket money, you know. They had um, promotional material that represented them pretty pretty nicely. Um, it was all good money, you know. Very very uh, good investment for Creative New Zealand. Uh, uh, I think we, uh, we 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 averaged it out at eighteen dollars per seat over, over ten years. Um, 133,000 uh, attendances and uh, the money that CNZ invested came to $18 per per yeah. seat, which was incredibly efficient. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when did you find out the axe was falling and what reasons were given for the reduction of the funds or the withdrawal of the funds? It was early September. Um, we just received, you mentioned, you know, had we received any bad news? No, we had a six-month report that we just uh, submitted for the first six months of this year for the six tours we did <clears throat> uh, it, 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 from February to June. And, and in every area of our report, it met expectations. Um, it was thorough. It was well-received. And, you know, there was no con concerns whatsoever. So when we received on Septem early September, this unsuccessful response, uh, <clears throat> response that we, our application had been unsuccessful, we were absolutely staggered. You know, we've got too much support out there in, in, in rural and regional New Zealand to, uh, to really um, understand how, how this came across. And, and there weren't many really good reasons given 